You have a goal. We have a plan. Bodybuilding.com All Access has over 50 training plans to help you reach your goal. So I'm going to take you through the chest workout. If you're ready to lose weight. Bring that intensity. Come on. Build muscle. You can be stronger. Train at the gym. It is day 23. A workout from home. All you need is a set of dumbbells. Get healthy, delicious recipes. It's a great snack because it's great for energy. And step-by-step -step video instruction. I will literally tell you what days to work out and what days to rest. Bodybuilding.com All Access has your perfect plan. The only thing that you need to do is commit. Get seven days free today. Hello guys, I'm Pauline Nordin. I run Fighter Diet. I'm here at Bodybuilding.com's gym. I'm doing a shoulder workout with you. It's going to be a fast tempo. I just came out of the general warm-up with shoulder external rotations after a bike. And now we're going to do a typical short rest. Uh, it's going to be fast. So standing shoulder presses, seated and all that. You're going to see I'm all about the angles, variations. We're going to take off. So start now and it's going to be the dumbbells. because this is just supposed to be 30 seconds. So I'm gonna do 10 to 12 reps between 30 seconds for a few sets. And I know the first set, that's when I have like the stamina. And you're gonna see the weight has to drop to keep in that same rep range. So with the 30s now, uh, I'm gonna try to do 10, but um, we'll see. So about 30 seconds between the sets, waiting, uh, can't do that much, can't check my phone, and then go right into the next set. So that means the weight is going to be a little small, lighter than if I took a longer time to rest. So as you can see, I, I died there. So then it's always good to have small dumbbells or lighter dumbbells, because you always you have a lot of strength first. Then you get fatigued, you're gonna see again, so I gotta drop and the ego out the window. Your muscles can't really see what you're doing, but I can feel it. You can feel the, my, my uh, voice too. But it's like, it's challenging. All right, so step number three. What I do then is if I can't come close to 10, I just drop them and get more reps out. So I stay within that 10 to 12 reps. Would you recommend the short rest times for a beginner, or what kind of split would you recommend? Uh, bodybuilding and, and training muscles means you're gonna have to vary it all the time. Short rest means you gotta have some kind of fatigue experience. If you don't know exactly like how it feels, you might like uh, lose control. So for beginners, I would say a little more time, one to one and a half minutes, to make sure that you are there and not fatigued. So a short rest, yes. 
but it's more an advanced move than taking a little more rest. amazing though when the time is cut off how more challenging it is so it's not always like it's good when you have injuries and you have to train around it too that you can exert yourself and challenge and fatigue your muscles you don't have to use those big weights if you didn't if I didn't see the weights I would think they were much heavier than they are okay so I was like I go faster too I have to like pace myself with 30 and like isn't 30 yet I'm sure you can notice that I have a really wide base like that. For me, it feels like I'm more stable than if I sit together. is that really do some eccentric moves. Don't just like drop the weight. You're like, you want to go through the set and make it hard for the muscle instead of just trying to cheat away. So there's a time and place for cheating, but when it comes to emphasizing, to actually holding down, you lose strength, but it's very good for muscle building to actually uh, make the muscles adapt and grow more. Okay, third set here. So another question from Facebook, Courtney wants to know, what's the difference between sitting and standing with this movement? So it's pretty much the same exercise. Of course, we're going to emphasize the shoulders. When I do them standing, I feel I have my whole spine has to work harder. Uh, stability, like sometimes you can get an impingement when you're seated and you turn to incline a little bit more, it take more with the chest. And that's actually how I started doing uh, standing because that kind of impingement went away when I couldn't cheat. I couldn't like lay like that. So I really think that I, I prefer that over the seat at any day. But I do like both because I'm a volume person, so I like to do a lot. Now we're going to do a behind the neck press. And this one that I wanted to have uh, is a warning triangle kind of exercise. If you have shoulder impingement, don't do this one. Uh, don't be sloppy on form. You're going to see that I'm not using that much weight. It's one of those things that uh, gains versus consequences is really what you have to pay attention to. Because if you... It's very hard to um, get yourself out of a bad position when it comes to these rear barbell presses. Don't you hate when someone does that in the gym? They just leave, drop them. I don't know, I'm going back, so I'm going to use them again. Here I like to also push a few extra. Again, big fat warning on that. Nothing for beginners. You have to have control. Not having you're like distracted by everything that's going on. So 
When it comes to training and weights, you, you have to be careful with that. Don't, don't let yourself think about what you're going to have for dinner later. It's going to be in the zone, because if you're not, that's when injury usually comes. Size on the lower part or the eccentrics. I'm doing this because I got tired, but I don't want to end the set. Question from YouTube When dieting, what is your number one tip? My number one tip when you're dieting, when I cut body fat, eat food that you can eat a lot of because as you get leaner, the hunger you're gonna get. And if you base it on only fitted macros, you're gonna find yourself choosing things that you have cravings for, but it's not gonna stimulate or like uh, satisfy your appetite. And if you're hungry, guess what? You start to eat. So we have a pretty easy question here. Do you listen to music when you train? If so, what is your current favorite song? Oh, I listen to a lot of music when I train, but not always. Sometimes I just like to actually hear my breathing. Uh, I listen to everything from hip hop to EDM to actually uh, black, gothic, uh, dark country and everything in between. So it's like my whole Spotify is like completely like a uh, schizophrenic. It's all kinds of genres. So. I'm a big, big music user. It gives me energy. It's just life. I grew up in a musical family, so like I, I love it. But also, sometimes it's nice to just hear how you're breathing. Do that. So now we're going to do uh, two kind of lateral raises. One is going to be a compound set, or some, some people call it super set. It's going to be lateral raises with dumbbell press. Why do I do that? Because I like the fatigue it gives. And you're going to see I'm struggling with very small weight. And it's not me being like a sissy, or maybe I am, I don't care. Uh, but it's really, it works the shoulders great. So if you've never done this before and you have no idea where your strength level is, just know you will be all over the place. You see me, I'm starting with some shoulder presses and then all of a sudden it's down to the times. So I lean forward a little bit. Isn't it interesting to see how you can you can like really struggle with those tiny bit weights? Like I love that. Like when I started to do that, before when I was younger, I always thought like, oh, I have to lift the heaviest ever. If I don't do that, I won't build muscle. And then I realized that weight is about how much you put on it over the whole set. So my training evolved a lot about that, and my shoulders grew a lot better. Before I had like big biceps, not much shoulders. Shoulders are tricky. You have to like pay attention to all kind of uh, angles and that you see my training I usually I like to go from one angle to another but it's just small variations it's like the same principle as having a underhand grip versus a neutral alternating and all that
I just went standing there because I felt like if I'm gonna do the lighter weights, I'm gonna have too many reps. I was like, oh, okay, let's start with the heavier, then go down to seated. So it's not like I all of a sudden change, but when I work out, I pay attention to my body signal, what, how it feels, and then I adjust. So that's why I was just already up and then sit, but I'm gonna go back to seated for the next one and do again seated and then press. So this is like a pre-fatigue movement. Uh, when you do first an isolation and then a full compound exercise. The thing is that I'm not a big person on over fatigue in general. Like I don't do that much. It makes no sense to me. But this one, it does make sense because I can feel it in the shoulders. got the perfect ways is when I'm struggling right of the, uh, around the uh, ninth, 10th. Question from YouTube. What is your favorite post-workout meal? My post-workout what? Meal? Like food? Uh, I like, usually what comes after my workout is a big bowl of stir-fried cabbage with chicken. Uh, I eat that, like I eat pounds of it, like four or five pounds. I have slow metabolism, I want to be lean, so what good I have to do? I have to pick and choose what I eat a lot of. Now we're going to do a cross style lateral races. Pretty much the same thing as the lateral one, but it's very, very rigid. Uh, elbows are straight. This is going to be too heavy. Yep. <laughs> So when I do this cross style, it's like there's no cheating. You can't. Uh, straight, spread the last a little, and then up. So this is everything. I'm gonna do 15. You're gonna see a thing that I do here between the sets is that it's gonna be very little. And hold on, you're gonna see this like a cliffhanger now. You just, oh, what's gonna happen? It's gonna take off and fly. Okay, so 10 reps here. Then I'm gonna stay here, uh, stand and look all crazy for like a few seconds. And then I'm gonna keep on slowly. You gotta try these because this is, these suck. What is the purpose of the hold at the top? The hold is an isometric contraction where pretty much nothing's happening. The load versus the f force on the muscle is equal. But you can see that it's I'm not here because I'm losing and losing fatigue and it goes down. That's just another technique you can use to stimulate your muscles. Uh, isometrics don't build muscles as much as uh, like uh, dynamic reps or concentric and eccentric, but it still has a place. And right where you hold it, it's gruesome, and anything that is gruesome is pretty much for building muscle. If it feels too good, it's not that helpful. All right, so uh, now we're gonna do a dumbbell rear race. So I'm gonna first, all right. I prefer the standing. Facebook, do you take any supplements? Oh, if I take supplements, you should see my cupboard. 
it's embarrassing at times. Uh, I can't choose just a few. People who do just multivitamin official, I'm like, how do you do it? It's like for me, I, have, I would say like a 20, I feel embarrassed, but also it's what it is. 20 supplements, different ones. I'm a supplementaholic and I've used it since I started and I always loved it. So supplements for me is just a part of fitness. It's nothing that I think that I can't get away with not using. But for me, it's just I want to optimize. I don't want to be just average. So supplements help, especially if you're really strict to the diet. You won't have a variety of foods like every day. So that's why I think supplements are critical for someone who trains as hard as I do. usually don't count reps that well like I forget and then all of a sudden it's like six and then ten I think this was more than ten so I kept going because I wasn't tired but I know that now when I'm doing this next next set I will be so I'm not gonna go up in weight here important to focus on the mind muscle connection or is there something else if you can't feel your muscle working through the set you are not there in like this mind muscle connection of course but mind muscle connection is something that if you exert maximum force your body is just gonna try no matter what to try to lift it for you so if you try too much and try like oh I'm gonna squeeze it and so on you probably won't overload your muscle and that is very important so it's like it's like a you have to dance tango with those two both feeling it and also lift for your life. It's like, lift as your life depends on it. That will help more than feeling the muscle. On the other hand, if I'm doing this race while I'm actually doing something like that, I might not have the mind-muscle connection for a reason. I'm not even doing the exercise for the muscle that I'm training. I'm gonna do one more here. So I'm doing a little few more reps here, more sets, because rear delts, is these ones, they always need extra. Knowing that your muscles are getting fatigued, do you start off your next exercises heavy or continuously work your way down? If I get fatigued in one exercise, it kind of, I will know a little bit about the next exercise. I won't be able to train as much. I can then take a longer time to recover. So instead of doing 30 seconds, I can have a few minutes. That will then recharge it and I can lift heavy. But if I keep the protocol at 30, 30, 30 seconds between the, the sets, then of course I have to just adjust and not go. I mean, we over, we overthink that we are stronger than we are. You see me, like I can just, it drops. It's typical muscle fatigue. All right, let's do some, uh, should we do some abs too? All right. And now you're gonna see some Nordine specials. Because I like the planks a lot, but I think they're boring when the ones you're just holding. So I have a few different variations. So the great thing with planks is that they kind of make you really strong in your whole core. And they're very like a functional. Like you stand, you're gonna stand and use them all the time. On the other hand, you also need mass builders. So uh, I train, twice, uh, train abs once or twice a week. One that is more like this, functional, and one that is like heavy, where I do crunches that are heavy weight and so on. So we're gonna do the plank versions here. So. I'm gonna start with what I call a long plank. So pretty much, I'm tucking my pelvis, I'm leaning, and I'm making myself as tall as possible, and as close to the floor as possible and soon you're gonna see me start to shake a little bit <sighs> and 
that's my body trying to like tell me like come on get up so then I rest so it's extremely important to not let your low back start to uh, arch or like you like a sway bag because that's not good for your spine so really long and really tight in your stomach when you do this so the difference here between a regular plank you see you have plank like this makes it easier so the longer you you get out the harder it is and you can do those with one leg up then the shake starts very much faster I get those two from YouTube how many hours a day do you typically train uh, 60 minutes plus warm-up so 75 minutes for weights and cardio I usually do two times high, uh, intervals for 20 minutes and then I just walk or I do 121 burpees uh, so I'm not I don't train that much so uh, it's not if you think that you don't have time to train just remember like how much I got done with just the shoulders okay so here we go with the dynamic plank, so these are like that. And when I feel it starts to go to my back, I go down to my knees and do pulses down here instead. Is it better to do this exercise with a ball or the foam roller? If you have a ball that works with that, great. Usually what I like with the foam roller is that it's so small that it gives me a longer lever, so it's harder than if I have a, a, a wide, like a taller ball. A tall ball would be more easy, so it's good for beginners, someone who's not as strong with this. Just so you know, these usually produce a lot of delayed onset muscle soreness because you're stretching it a lot. So if you feel like someone punched you in the stomach, you know why you did these. What do you typically do on your recovery days? So recovery is one of those things that I'm, I suck at. Uh, I've always made it my mission to make myself better at resting. So on my recovery days, I usually go and have two hours massage. And, uh, and stretch, so uh, that's my weekly stretch. I have to do that. Uh, this is gonna be a standing walk, a standing ab roller walk. And it's gonna look a little suspicious, but I think I know what I'm doing. So, uh, stand wide. You're gonna go all the way down, like that. And watch out here for your shoulders because you can definitely subluxate it. So slow and steady. And when I can't do those more, I keep on going. And that didn't go left because I was tired. I'm gonna do one more set of these and then we're gonna do uh, a little bit like diagonal. I like to do that uh, with the ab roller. What I like about this standing thing, I feel like it's a complete workout. This flexibility, also going from extending and up and you have to tuck your pelvis. I like it a lot, I never see it. It looks, looks a little bit like a Hindu push ups. Uh, and if you do this at the gym, you're gonna get a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, so. Do 
Do you change your nutrition on your rest days versus training days? Uh, the only thing that I change between a workout day and a non-workout day is kind of my pre-workout uh, supplementation and post-workout. I don't take any pre-workout, no stimulants, uh, nothing like that on my days off. Uh, but I do take a protein shake. So that is like the only thing. The stimulant, pre-workout goes away. Everything else stays the same. Because you're still recuperating. So if you suddenly like cut down on protein and stuff just to have a day off, you're like wonder, do you don't, you don't want to recover? All right, so now we're going to do the, uh, the diagonal or the around the clock version of the plank. Pretty much on the knees. Going to go that way, that way in the middle. And just do things slowly here because this is a move where every time you do like a lateral bend in your spine, it's a danger again. So you want to make sure that you don't go over your capacity. Start light and if you feel something weird, just drop it and go down on your stomach. So I start in the, in the top position here. So you're going to go straight, taking a turn, taking a turn. And this is really good for the obliques. And if you look at what happens here with my knees. So what happens is that I'm kind of letting the spread. So when I go to the side, I get, I get the comf cushion here on the, like the vastus medialis instead of on the bone of the, of the knee structure. So that makes it feel better for me. So one more set here. Okay, you want to do one more? You can do one more, last one, okay. It's just gonna be straight ahead, 10 reps just to feel like we're getting pumped in the stomach. Okay, so. Six is the final countdown. Seven, eight. Nine and last one. Oh, there you go, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this shoulder workout. Hope to see you again. Go to bottom.com, read all the articles, and make sure that you keep on motivating yourself to go to the gym. Have a wonderful day, guys. You have a goal, we have a plan. Bodybuilding.com All Access has over 50 training plans to help you reach your goal. So, I'm going to take you through the chest workout. If you're ready to lose weight, Bring that intensity, come on. Build muscle. You can be stronger. Train at the gym. It is day 23. A workout from home. All you need is a set of dumbbells. Get healthy, delicious recipes. It's a great snack because it's great for energy. And step-by-step -step video instruction. I will literally tell you what days to work out and what days to rest. Bodybuilding.com All Access has your perfect plan. The only thing that you need to do is commit. Get seven days free today.